Hey guys, I wanted to post this repair on the Samsung French door bottom mount uh, dual evaporator. And I think we've all seen it where the uh, fan starts to make a noise and eventually stops because the ice builds up. So what I do is I uh, install the uh, heater on the suction line to, uh, and it's in parallel with the uh, defrost heater. So when the defrost heater comes on, usually it takes about 20, maybe 30, mild, 20, 25 minutes to defrost then this um, added here will be on, it's 15 watts, and about, max it gets to is about 160, 170 degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, I've been doing this repair for about a year uh, on quite a few of these and never had a call back, so I'm, I'm really happy with the results, and other techs have also uh, been doing it uh, successfully. So, um, as you can see, I, I, I zip tie the, um, the heater onto the suction line here and they do um, and I'll link the special zip ties they they make uh, extreme weather zip ties up to like 250 um, degrees and uh, so that's uh, that's the ones uh, that I recommend you want to uh, strip the wiring so that you can uh, fit the wire into the displacement connector uh, they're uh, blue connectors that I use uh, and I'll uh, put a link down at the bottom um, for for the heater as well as the connectors. And you just want to make sure that it's uh, it's long enough that'll uh, get all the way into the uh, the metal insert. Uh, so you, you kind of um, expose a little. Uh, I don't know. It's about a I don't know three quarters of an inch maybe. Um, I didn't measure it, but. But you want to make sure that it's long enough so that when you get in there that uh, it's going to make the con connection um, once you uh, press it. And so once you get both wires in there, uh, then you uh, you press it like this with the pliers. And that's it. And so it's, uh, that little metal pin kind of sits flush uh, on there. And then you can... You can snap it into place. You want to make sure, like I'm doing, that, that the wires are, are not loosey-goosey in there, um, that they uh, make a solid connection. Uh, I use these little mini zip ties uh, just to secure it so that uh, it doesn't pop open. I found sometimes these kind of won't latch properly, and, and so they can pop open. So there's just some added, added security there. And uh, there you go. That one feels good. You, you want to make sure that you don't have uh, the wires plugged in when you're doing this as well. And what I also do is just add some uh, silicone grease. Uh, and this just helps uh, so that the moisture won't uh, migrate into the connections. And you know, I'm just doing it the same thing on the other side. You know, I'm going to uh, strip the wires, put the uh, connector in in the same fashion. I do want to mention that this is not a remedy for a clogged drain. So um, Samsung does have a uh, drain leakage kit. And the part number for the kit is at the bottom there. It says manufacturer part. So on the right hand side, doing just as I did on the left, uh, installing that connector. And you just want to make sure that when you cut um, cut those uh, the heater wire that uh, you leave enough slack uh, that you don't cut it too short because uh, that because uh, then you're you're buying another heater <laughs> to put in there some techs have been uh, having a tough time getting sourcing the uh, sh502 and you can use that uh, sh201 uh, it's same he uh, wattage but uh, and the same heat of course but um, it is a little longer and I just find the SH502 to be more manageable. One note is that when you install the uh, thermistor, uh, just make sure that the heater is not too close to the thermistor. So I put the thermistor on the right hand side tubing um, so that way the heat from the uh, heater doesn't um, affect the sensing of the temperature of the evaporator. Some techs have voiced concern about liability issues, but the actual heat of the, uh, the heater don't, doesn't get that hot. You can actually put your hand on it uh, for a few seconds. I'm going to show that at the end, 
uh, and it won't burn your hand. So it's very minimal heat and not definitely not enough to burn the plastic or, or any uh, part of the evaporator area. Okay, so for anybody that knows me, I love zip ties and you can't have too many zip ties on your uh, re-engineer. So um, I'm plugging it in now. I'm, uh, also, I'm, I'm not putting the thermistor on there intentionally so you can see the final version of the heater installed. Okay. And this is what the, oh, I went into the uh, diagnostics and turned on the, um, the, the defrost. And you can see in the middle there, the tubings, um, the frost is melting because the heater is activating. Okay. And that is kind of a closer version. Uh, and you can see the, the frost on the right hand side. I'm, I'm really not concerned with that tube at all. Uh, there's no need for me and, uh, to, to defrost that because that's not going to be close to the fan. And here's my uh, thermal imager. And you can see, you know, 157, uh, 159. So it's not really getting that hot. And this is probably after about uh, five minutes. And it really doesn't get hotter than that. Um, I think the, 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 the highest I've seen is maybe 165, 170, so, somewhere in there. So this is after seven or eight minutes of being in defrost. You can see I can touch it for about two or three seconds without uh, being uncomfortable. And that's your gauge that it's working right. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.